In the last video, we saw an interesting result when we passed an array into a function. Here, I've used the VS Code debugger to pause our peanuts.c program inside the argmax function. We see on the call stack that we have main, git last box, and argmax. And in main, we see the peanut counts array, which has the values 5 and 6. But if we look in git last box, peanut counts has this weird hexadecimal value. And if we look in the local variables of argmax, we see the same thing for array. This weird hexadecimal value is a memory address stored in a pointer variable, and I'd like to talk a bit more about what this means. So let's go back to the whiteboard and look at some more stack diagrams. In this program, our main function has an array of four integers, and then calls two functions to compute the sum and the product of that array of integers. Those two functions, sum and product, each take the array and its size as input, and each operate by looping through the elements of the array to compute their output. But they are implemented slightly differently to highlight the connection between arrays and pointers in C. To see what's going on in each of these functions, let's draw a stack diagram. As always, the stack frame for main sits on the bottom of our stack diagram. And in main, we have three variables, ascending, triangle, and factorial. Triangle and factorial are both integer variables, so we show them as having a simple box in the stack frame to store an integer value. Whereas the variable ascending is an array variable, and the size of that array is 4, so we know that there are boxes for storing 4 integers for the elements of this array. When we execute the first line of main, the values 1, 2, 3, 4 are assigned into the four elements of this array. Then when we execute the next line, we call the sum function, which means we get a new stack frame on top of main. In the stack frame for sum, we have four variables. The two arguments that were passed in, r and size, and the two variables that were declared locally, total and i. Three of these variables are of type int, but the variable for the array is of type int star. What this type means is a pointer to an integer. A pointer variable in C is a variable that stores a memory address. In general, those memory addresses that we store in pointer variables are locations of data that we are using in our program. In particular, this int pointer variable for the array stores the address that was passed in when we called the function, and what we passed in for the first argument of the function was our int array variable ascending. And so what this means is that actually the variable ascending evaluates to the address in memory where the array is stored. And so when we pass in this variable to the function, what we are actually passing in is the location inside of main stack frame where the array data begins. And so then the address that is stored by the int pointer variable in the function is the address where the array data begins. And rather than writing down a numerical address inside of the RAM for the computer, we draw this on a stack diagram as the pointer variable pointing to the location of the memory address it's storing. So the array pointer variable points to the beginning of the array of numbers that we allocated in main. 
at the start of the function, we are passed in 4 for the value of size. And we set on the first line of the function the value of total to 0. So this is the state of our stack diagram before we begin executing the for loop. Note that the boxes for some of the variables are empty. This is because we don't yet know what data is stored in those variables. In C, variables that exist in your function always have some location in memory assigned to them, but until we put data in that location in memory, we have no idea what the value of that variable is, and so we represent it by leaving the box empty. Now as we execute the for loop, we'll get to the top of the for loop and initialize setting i equals 0. We'll check that i is less than size, which it is, so we'll execute the body of the loop. And now we will add total to array at bucket i. Now it might seem strange that we can index into this variable r when the type of that variable is int pointer, not an int array like we declared in main. But this actually works out fine for the same reason that we can pass the array variable as the argument to this function that is expecting an int pointer. This variable in main that is of type integer array, when we evaluate it, evaluates to a memory address. And so when we index based on this array variable, we are operating on the start address and then going some number of indices past the start of the array. And the same thing happens when we index based on an int pointer variable is that we have the address where the data starts and then the index tells us how many integers past that starting point do we want to go to find the data that we are manipulating. So here we'll access the zeroth element starting from this pointer, which means we'll get the value 1, add that to total, and total becomes 1. Now we get to the bottom of the loop, come back to the top, increment i. i is still less than size, so now we get the data from the array at index 1, which means we go one integer's worth of memory past the start of the array, and we access this element and add 2 to total, so our total becomes 3. Similarly, on the iterations of the loop where i equals 2 and i equals 3, we will access the next two buckets of the array in main, add those values to the total, so we'll get 6 and then 10. And when we get to the bottom of the loop, i gets incremented to 4 and is no longer less than size. So we leave the loop and return total. When the sum function returns, this evaluates to the return value of 10, which gets assigned into our variable triangle. So now we get a value of 10 and we remove the stack frame for the function that has now returned. Continuing our execution of main, on the next line we call our prod function, passing in again the address of the array and the size is 4. Whenever we call a new function, its stack frame goes on top of the stack, and so we are actually reusing the same memory that was previously used for the sum function when we call the product function. The prod function again has four variables in its stack frame, the two arguments and two local variables. And once again, we passed the variable ascending as the first argument, 
And so the address that is stored in the variable r is the address where the array of data in main begins. And so we indicate that in our stack diagram by drawing that the pointer points to that location in memory. Again, the size passed in was four. And this time we initialize total to one. But this time our loop operates a little bit differently. Here, our loop variable, rather than being an integer that was used to index into the array, is now a pointer, which we are initializing by taking the value of the array variable and assigning it into the position variable. So we are setting pause to store the value that is currently in R, which means we are copying the address from this location into this location. And in the stack diagram, we indicate that by they are storing the same address, so they are pointing to the same spot in our stack diagram. We'll come back to the loop condition in a moment, but let's first look at the loop body. So here we are multiplying total by star pause. So we previously saw the star, all of these cases in blue, as declaring a variable to be of pointer type. This star that I have drawn in red has a slightly different meaning. Again, it is because we are working with a pointer, but specifically, since pause is already a pointer variable, saying star pause means follow that pointer and give me the thing it is pointing to. So this is known as the dereference operator. It is getting us the thing that the pointer points to. So whenever you have a pointer variable and you evaluate star pointer, you get the data that the pointer is pointing to. So here, pause is pointing to the first element of the array. And so when we evaluate the thing that pause is pointing to, we get back the value in that location. So we get a one. And so on the first iteration of the loop, we multiply total by one. Then we come back to the top of the loop and we will increment the pointer. So we are doing pause plus plus. That seems similar to I plus plus, but when we did I plus plus before, we know that taking an integer and adding one just gives us the next integer. If on the other hand, we take a pointer and add one, what that means in C is moving the pointer to the next thing that it could point to. Since the type of this pointer is pointer to integer, the next thing that it could point to is the next integer after the current location in memory. So we are updating the pointer to point to the next integer, which is the second bucket in our array. Now that we've performed the update, we check the loop condition, and this time let's talk about what that means. As we just saw, adding one to a pointer points to the next element of the same type in memory. Here we have the variable r, which is of type int pointer, and we are adding size, which we know to be four, to that variable. So we are taking the value of that pointer and saying that plus four, so that gets us one, two, three, four. So r plus four evaluates as a pointer to the first location beyond the end of the array. And then we are comparing that address, the address of the first thing beyond the array, to the address that is stored in the variable pause. And the address that we are storing here is a smaller address 
than the one past the end of the array. And so pause less than array plus size evaluates to true, so we enter the loop. On this iteration of the loop, when we follow our pointer, the thing that it is pointing to is the value 2, and so we will multiply total by 2 and store that in total, and then come back to the top of the loop. We'll increment the value that is stored in the pause variable, so we are moving to the next integer address. So now pause is pointing to the third element of the array, and the address that is stored in pause is still less than r plus 4. So we execute the loop body again. We dereference the pointer, getting the thing that it points to, which is 3. And then we multiply total and store it back into total. And so we get a value of 6. Come back to the top of the loop increment our pointer variable. It's still less than array plus 4, so we execute again. The thing it points to is this value, so we multiply total by 4 and store it back into total. So that gives us 24. We come back to the top of the loop. We increment pause again, and now it's pointing past the end of the array. So the address that it is storing is the next address beyond the end of the array, and that next address beyond the end of the array is exactly array plus size. That's what we got when we added 4 to this pointer. And so those two addresses are now equal, which means that pause is no longer less than, and so it evaluates to false, and we leave the loop and return total. So we get a value of 24 for factorial in main, and our stack frame for the prod function goes away. So the key takeaways from all of this are that in C, arrays are stored as consecutive chunks of memory. And if we evaluate the variable of an array, for example, passing it to a function, that evaluates as the address of the beginning of the chunk of memory storing the array. We also have pointer variables in C, and we can use pointer variables, much like array variables, indexing into the elements of the array, even though our variable is a pointer. And we can also move pointer variables by adding an amount, one or more, to go that many items ahead in memory. We'll talk much more about all of this later in the semester when we get to dynamic memory and multidimensional arrays in C. But I wanted to give you this introduction now so that you know why we are drawing arrows for pointers in our stack diagrams, and so that you have some idea what's going on when we pass an array into a function in C.